So good morning everybody. It's just gone 5 a.m. and we're out here in the potato field. Our early potatoes are planted here. You can't really see at the moment because of the uh, the light. And we put the van lights on to show you in a wee second. But it's currently minus one. So the leaves of the potatoes uh, have got ice on them. And if the sun rises over the horizon behind us here, that all ice will work as a magnifying glass and burn the leaf of the potatoes. Uh, setting them back badly from where they are and uh, delaying the start of our harvest for early potatoes. So we're out here to see if we can try and mitigate that. Uh, quite often we would have used our big tanker and sprayed water over the tops of them to try and melt the ice. But that's kind of hit and miss too because if you go too soon the ice refreezes, you go too late and you've missed it so it's just a balancing act. So we're going to try the French method today which is to light small fires that the heat will stop the frost coming down anymore and hopefully lift what bit of frost we have here. Now it's only minus one at the moment, but the temperature always drops to its lowest point after sunrise, which is where some people get caught out. Um, but if you have potatoes or vegetables or flowers or something in your garden like that, that you're worried about, actually the best thing you can do is go out now and turn your sprinkler on and let the water wash the frost off and keep it running to stop it refreezing you can work out easy enough on small areas and stuff like that but um for us on bigger scale it's very hard to make sure you save it all but just one other wee point here whenever it's so quiet and still this morning just listen to the, the songbirds and the the wildlife enjoying the morning as well you can see better on the camera there just see the frost there on the grass field behind us, that white frost. So we have a few bales of straw stacked out here in the tramline rows and we're going to light them. It's safe enough because it's just bare soil around them, there's nothing else can catch. There's no wind blowing to blow the, the smoke any direction, it'll just go straight up or hopefully not go too far and, and provide a wee bit of heat here for these potatoes. So there we are, up and going. We sacrificed seven bales of straw at 140 pounds to try and save 20,000 pounds worth of crop. So you can see why it's important. <laughs> Given the shortages of food in the world, I think it's important that we look after what food we have and try and save it from uh, being destroyed by Mother Nature. I'm sure the apple orchards and stuff in Armagh are up to the same thing. Really just trying to keep that heat away, or that cold away and provide a bit of heat down there. Um, hopefully it'll be enough just to take the sting out of the frost before the sun rises. That's the joys of farming and you're really based on Mother Nature and you're trying to work with it. Uh, and sometimes you're trying to manipulate it that doesn't cause you heartache or bankruptcy you know our our livelihoods depend on these crops um, and if we lose our crops or don't get them harvested the cost now of growing anything is basically the way fertilizer and fuel has risen it's extremely expensive to put a crop in the ground and get it growing um, and we can't afford to lose it so fingers crossed this helps mitigate our issues here there was a wee light frost yesterday morning and you can just see how the edges of the oceans got burnt a wee bit but this is a much more severe frost um, and you can actually see how the heat of the the fires have softened that that leaf and taken the sting out of the frost hopefully it'll spread far enough to, to help I'm not sure how well you can hear it on camera, but just listen to the wildlife in the morning. This is what makes it uh, brilliant to work in the countryside. All the noises and the singing, enjoying the fresh morning. So yeah, it seems like every year now, um, 
end of April, start of May, we get so many days of this hard frost, which is hard in all crops, uh, our winter barley and stuff, etc. That's not far away from producing seed heads. It can be a big hindrance to it, but there's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing we can change. Um, but these potatoes, per area, they have a much higher value. And it costs far more to grow them. But the value is much higher, so you can justify spending time or money doing bits and pieces like this. Now, some people will maybe say, oh, look at that smoking in the atmosphere. You're causing pollution. You're doing X, Y, and Z. To me, that the minute this is nearly as clean a way of doing it as any, I could bring the tractor in with the water tanker, uh, sit there for a couple of hours spraying water, trying to stop it refreezing, and I'm burning diesel into the atmosphere doing that. Um, at least this way, it's just clean straw, it's potash. It's safe there because it's soil all around it, it can't go anywhere. Um, they do this in the vineyards in France every year. Now obviously they just burn the branches of the trees that they've cut off throughout the winter when they're pruning. But yeah, this is the joys of nature and the joys of trying to produce your food. The public will come into the shop, are coming in already, it's only, it's only the end of April. Why have you not got new potatoes? Because they see the Jersey Royals or the Cypress potatoes in the shops and want to know why ours aren't ready. This is why. There's a certain time to plant crops and there's a certain time to harvest crops. Um, and you have to play with nature and work around it to try and grow the best crops you can. Some years we've had them under fleece or under plastic. Um, that does bring them on quicker, but we still get the same hassles with the frost um, and actually more weeds. But if the frost is as severe as it is now and the potatoes are much bigger, I'm going to try and show you what they looked like last year. Um, if they get hit, it sets them back a lot more and halves our yield and just pretty much destroys the viability of the crop. But that's what it is to be a farmer. This Listening to the bird song and everything this morning here, out in a nice, fresh, crisp, quiet morning. Nobody else is really up. Um, it's a great job, but sometimes we have these difficulties to deal with as well. So we'll just keep an eye on this here to make sure everything's okay. But say the soil all around the bottom, the flames and the and the, the fire can't spread or go anywhere. Um, so hopefully it's providing a wee bit of uh, protection from the frost. So we're just right here with JCB in the bucket and we're just knocking out what's left here to get it to uh, finish burning off uh, and leave it as safe as possible. So we stand at this gap in the hedge here, you can just see the sun is arising on the horizon there behind me. <clears throat> and if I spin around, you can just see the very bottom there, the bottom couple of yards of the field is now being hit by the sun. Sunrise was to be 546, which it would be in places, but it's now 628 and the sun's just starting to hit this field. But when we left the house and the temperature was minus one, it's now minus two. So at sunrise and just beyond is your coldest temperature. So we're hoping there's enough um, residual heat and a wee bit of smoke here just to haze over the sunshine. Anybody actually that's sort of across there and uh, probably know me have a wee bit of smoke, which I apologize for. Oh yeah, and anybody wants to complain about the pollution of a few bales of straw burning? Tell me when you're going to cut down the amount of those flying off on holidays or going to import produce that we could grow here. So you can see, <coughs> see there from the time lapse that it just took two minutes for the sun to get from the bottom of the field to pretty much halfway up. So that's a quick it moves. Um, the temperature's now dropped to minus two point something here, but the weather station up at the house, which sits up on the horizon in the sun, has now risen. To zero so the sun's hitting it and that's putting the temperature up but we're still we're still below zero here and there's the sun just breaking through the trees so when the ones here fill up the field you can see that the frost is melted and that's just really water sitting on the leaf so we've got some sort of protection up here and the sun still hasn't really 
hit too hard up here down the bottom end there now where the sun's quite strong we'll just go down and show also how we probably could have done one or two or three bales of straw down the bottom just to take the effect out so if you come right down here to the very bottom um, and where the sun is hit first we're going to lose a few here i'm sure because you have these few plants that have the uh, frost has melted off not too bad and then you get the like of this boy here that's still still pure white and he's going to get the brunt of the sun now but there's only so much we can do and we're trying our best this afternoon will soon tell whether any of it has worked or how many potatoes are damaged but that's the joys of farming and that's the joys of producing food for you the consumer to enjoy at your table <laughs>